Now let's learn about TSEG TOLED and the keys of the stolen graphics memory, which is to say TSEG. We're going to be learning about TSEG. Now an interesting thing is that while the older data sheets have this and they specify both the compatible and the TSEG ranges, the 10th generation Ice Lake data sheets lose this definition and they just list TSEG, whereas the 10th generation Comet Lake had both CSEG and TSEG. So it looks like that is the cut line between when CSEG starts to be deprecated apparently. 10th Gen Comet Lake has it, 10th Gen Ice Lake, and everything beyond that doesn't have it. So that means we now need to learn about TSEG. This seems to be the de facto and preferred way of dealing with SMRAM going forward. So TSEG is defined as TOLED minus stolen minus TSEG to TOLED minus stolen. But what does that mean? What is TOLED? What is TSEG? What is stolen? In our memory map Tetris, TOLED was listed there. And above TOLED is this PCI memory. That's the MMIO space that is used for things like the extended configuration address space. Below TOLED is the graphics memory or graphics stolen memory, as you'll see it's called by the documentation. And then beyond that is TSEG. So that's what we're going to care about. TSEG MB, and you can see it's listed as SMRAM. So between TSEG MB and TOLED is this graphics memory, which is called the graphics stolen memory and the graphics GTT stolen memory. So we got to understand what's going on in this little snippet of the memory space. Well, zooming in on it from the 11th generation data sheet, you've got the PCI memory range, and then you've got TOLED. TOLED is defined as bus zero, device zero, function zero, offset BC. The graphics stolen memory starts at bus zero device zero offset zero, uh, bus zero device zero function zero offset B zero. This one's B4 and TSEG is B8. So you can see a whole bunch of stuff in the memory controller space, bus zero, bus zero device zero function zero. And so the SMRAM here is bounded by TSEG on the bottom and graphics stolen memory on the top. So let's look at the definition of those registers. All right, TOLED, top of lower usable DRAM, offset BC. So this register has bits 20 to 31 are used for a address, which is the top of lower usable DRAM. Then there's some reserved space, then there's a lock. All right, the top of lower usable DRAM is basically saying in the context of, you know, this space, TOLED is here and it's saying this is RAM stuff below this. Like there's the normal main memory, there's a DMA protected region as it's called, some SM RAM, some stolen memory for the graphics. But then above TOLED is where you start seeing PCIe, memory mapped IO and things like that. So this above it is like space that is used for memory mapped IO. And this down here is special RAM usage effectively. So TOLED is the top of lower usable DRAM and we had talked very briefly before, I think we'll see it again, yeah, we will see it again, uh, that there is a way to sort of reclaim this physical memory space that's stolen by memory mapped IO. So basically TOLED is where does the thievery for memory mapped IO start? And there's Sonic again. All right, so TOLED, top of lower usable DRAM. Then there's the base of data of stolen memory. And so this is graphics data stolen DRAM. And it has this again, 20 to 31 is the base and there's a lock bit. Then there's the GTT stolen memory. This stands for graphics translation table. And that again has bits 20 to 31 with a lock bit. And finally TSEG bits 20 to 31 and a lock bit. And so the question is, why do all these things have a lock bit? Well, so let's think of it this way. If TOLED is the start of sort of the memory mapped IO and it's, you know, stuff above there is, you know, not going to ever be used as RAM RAM until you use the remapping mechanism. The stuff down here is basically an adjustable range of how much memory needs to be stolen for this, how much memory needs to be stolen for that, how much memory needs to be used for SM RAM and so forth. So by placing TSEG MB, you're going to want to place it at some location and then you're going to want to lock it in place. And you're going to want to place the base of the GTT and then you're going to want to lock it in place. Because if you don't lock these things in place, and if SM RAM is going to be this area that has this highly privileged code that can scribble all over everyone's memory everywhere, then you have these potential attacks, which I'm just calling titch attacks here because we're going to move things just a titch. 
So if you didn't lock down this base of GTT stolen memory, then an attacker could titch it down this way and scribble all over this stuff and then move it back up and they would have effectively scribbled over SMRAM. Same thing, if the TSEG MB was not locked down, they could just move it a little titch and move it up and scribble over SMRAM and then, you know, get arbitrary code in SMM. Or for instance, they could slide TSEG MB down into main memory so they can put their attacker controlled code there push the SM base down here, and then as long as their code is at SM base plus X8000, then their attacker controlled code would run there. So these things right here, basically, you know, the thing we really care about is between TSEG MB and the graphic stolen memory. That is going to be our TSEG, that is going to be our SM RAM. That's the place that, you know, Intel generally recommends you move from compatible memory region up into this TSEG because TSEG is granted uh, extra pr protections. It's granted protection against DMA attacks just automatically. Whatever is in this range is not accessible via DMA transla transactions, and it's also protected against someone just directly scribbling into it. So building up our attack tree a little bit more, the TSEG defense is to lock the TSEG MB and the BGSM, the base of GTT stolen memory, and that will afford protection for the TSEG range against both DMA attacks and attacks originating from the CPU. Now, just like protected range registers, it is possible that even if the defender locked down these things, they could have misconfigured it. So an attacker could try to exploit a misconfiguration of TSEG where the you know, defender, for instance, set TSEG too high, but they're actually using SMRAM below TSEG or above TSEG. And so consequently, uh, that would be an exploitable scenario. So the defense against that is to carefully analyze the TSEG range versus where the SMM code is actually placed. All right, now I'm going to introduce a, a crossbar here because most of the rest of these defenses that we're gonna be talking about in this threat tree apply equivalently well to CSEG and TSEG. So for instance, there's an attack of sleep-wake attacks, which as with the uh, protecting the spy flash chip, we said we're gonna cover later. So that's gonna be the next major section in the class. So we'll skip that for now. Okay, well, you're done and you're not done. So you're done with learning about SMRAM for now. And you've seen a little bit of write protection, but there's more to see for write protection as we make our way to the attacks.